My, uh, my name is Alex. I'm doing a speech on identity theft. It's been a real big problem, you know, over the last few years. As soon as we hit the millennium, it became a really big deal. Uh, before, if you're ever attacked by identity theft, don't blame yourself. It can affect anyone regardless of age, gender, economic status, race. Um, this happens all over the United States. It's the fastest growing crime in America. Uh, that's due to the organized crime. You have people that get the information, then you have people that will sell it to someone. Then you have the people that they sold it to, they'll sell it to somebody that, you know, has like mass Photoshop skills. They make birth certificates, credit cards, you, whatever, driver's licenses under other people's names. They'll use the social, they'll get money off of them for that. Especially with dead people, people will claim social security on them. Um, that actually happened last month from the town that I'm from. There's almost 10 million people affected by it every year. 41% before, it's gone up 41% before last year. And it's cost us over, I checked this morning, it's over $55 billion a year. So that's where all of our tax money is going to, if you're ever wondering. There's uh, two main categories. Cat categories for identity theft. There's account takeover where the person gets your information and literally takes over your account. Like they'll use your your credit card numbers, your bank statements, you know, whatever they can get from it. Um, they'll pretty much be like, you'll be putting money into your account and they're going to be taking money out. And, you know, you may not notice it, but in a month or so you're going to notice, you know, that's happening. Um, another one is true identity theft or application fraud. This is where the person takes your social security number or uh, they'll get into your account or, you know, they'll use it for application fraud. And they can go on for this for a very long period of time and you, you won't know about it. You know why? You're here in Tennessee. They can be here in, like, California and they're you over there. I mean, nobody knows you in California, so how do they know that, you know, them or not? A good way to, you know, keep an eye on this happening and stuff, I'll get into that later on here. Uh, there's, there's a couple different ways that you can keep an eye on stuff. Uh, stealing purses and wallets. That's, that's a really big thing. You know, a lot of people, a lot of guys and women, they carry social security cards and, you know, a bunch of other like driver's licenses, military IDs. I'm from a military town. Um, Social Security cards, credit cards. You'd be surprised. People keep weird stuff, and especially women, because you like to keep everything in a purse. Sorry, but it's true. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> No. All right. Uh, dumpster diving is a big one. Um, I actually had this mailed to me in the mail. It's a, uh, a forklift operating guide. Somebody mailed it to me. They were like, I found this, you know. They're like, uh, check it out. And I'm like, okay, why would you send me a forklift operating guide? Uh, like, I work for the fire department. I don't need to drive a forklift operator, you know, stuff. I really could care less. I'd call in other people to do it. But then I got going through it, and then I found stuff like this. You're going to be like, what's this? Because you guys can't really see it. It has names on here, social security numbers, and date of birth for the people that were uh, taking the tests. And then it gives you their test score. Everybody got 100. <laughs> yeah. No, they work for Office Max. So they're getting like 550 an hour or maybe less to drive a forklift. Then it had uh pictures of driver's licenses in it. These are supposed to be shredded as after they, you know, meet their purpose. They, you know, it has everything on there. Yes, sir. Oh, I, I can just imagine. I used to be in the military, so I've seen... <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, they're not around anymore. They went under, so... Yeah. Uh, last year? Yeah, but they're slowly closing now. Like, down in Chattanooga and where I'm from, they're, they're not there anymore. But, uh, you know, if you're, like, an identity thief or whatever, you know, this is really all you need right here. That other piece of paper, tip of the iceberg, you know. It has the information on there, but... It doesn't have signatures. You know, a lot of companies will check signatures with other signatures. This has, you know, social security number, address, uh, driver's license number, and signature on there. So, that you know, that's all you really need. And this place was terrible because you got them for different people. And it has pretty much everything on there. And then if you just had that first sheet of paper in the last one, you'd have, you know, the the signatures right here. Because Office Max does not shred or destroy anything. There, uh, There's some other information in that that was pretty interesting. And then you have test scores and, and everything in there. But they have everything in there that you think would be trash has valuable information. This has driver's license numbers on it and first and last names. And the same with this one. We also found in that uh, a lot of their employees were logged in there, and they have to log in with their name. And why they were doing the test, the social would be in there. And, you know, if that book didn't come to me, and it would get out, you know, there's somebody out in, like, the underground part of identity theft and stuff, they could mass distribute that stuff. There'd be buyers. They'd be selling it for, you know, a couple hundred bucks per social. And you're thinking... Yeah, I mean, it's pretty cheap, but you get a lot of that stuff in there. You know, people, like where I'm from, the flea market. You know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on on the flea market that people don't realize, but all you got to do is walk up to the person and be like, hey, you know, do you have such and sh such? And they'll be like, no. And they'll be like, what about this? And they'll be like, yeah, come back to my van. You know, <laughs> right, right there at the flea market in front of everybody, you know, they'll be... They'll be swapping stuff, and nobody really cares, you know. Nobody pays attention to it. And uh, stealing mail is another one. That's why uh, you have the little uh, padlock things on your mailbox for when you leave for a long time. Mailman can put mail in there, but bolt cutters can fix that. But like then, yeah. But then again, from where I'm from, again, I'm from military town. Everybody is in Iraq, and they're still getting mail there. So people can go there, they can take their mail, figure out information on them, get credit card numbers, they can get their bills, their statements, uh, tax information, you know, just send it right to their house. They're not going to be there for 13 months, so, you know, nobody's really going to pick up on it. Yes, sir? You can actually do I spoke at a college last year. My buddy Kevin right there, raise your hand. All right, that guy right there, before I went to his college, they have a thing like that. You can get online. You can, like, you know, type in Kevin, put his last name in, and it'll bring a nice little goofy picture up of him and name. Well, then you can call the college to, like, the account part, and you can social engineer them into giving you whatever you want to know about Kevin. Yes, sir. Yeah, whatever you want to know about them is on there. And then yeah, and then if you need more information, you can always call up to the main part of the college and you can ask them, tell them you're like a, uh, a creditor or something and this person submitted an application you needed to check with the college. Like, if you just have the social and you don't have their name? Yeah, you... Yeah, and you could look on Google if you if you're good at Google hacking, you know, you can type it in there and you can pick up stuff on it. But just a social I mean there's things online that I have in here that you can look up on people. Um I did it to myself 
because of, you know, working with the fire department and stuff. I paid like 20 bucks for this thing, and I went through, and I typed in, you know, as not as much information, you know, as I should have about myself, you know, put like Tennessee as a state and put my town in and my social, and it, was, it just brought up all this stuff because, you know, I was a student. I work, you know, for the government, kind of, with the fire department and uh, some other stuff. When I got in trouble, that was on there. They, you know, it was public access to everybody. A lot of people, some more methods, uh, calling up the people's houses, you know, like the people that do scams and stuff over the phone where they'll call up and be like, you won the lottery, but we need like a hundred bucks first before we can send you your hundred dollars back to you and you know all they're going to do is be getting your information over the phone and they usually target elderly people because for some reason old people I guess because they didn't grow up in the generation we are just don't get it and they're too scared to try to get it so uh, that's one reason getting names and addresses is, is pretty easy to do uh, like with you, you know, you have a website. People can go on there and get your contact information. They can look that up and, like, say one of those search engines like we were talking about a minute ago and pull up whatever they wanted to know about you, and they could use that for their own gain. A lot of these places just cost nineteen ninety nine or five ninety nine, depending on where you go and what type of stuff you want, and that's usually for, like, a month, you know, you can use it for a lot of there's a lot of free sites out there that can do that also, but they don't really give you that much. Uh, shoulder surfing is another one at like ATMs or you know at desks. I brought an example. I was on the back of my shirt, and I just thought about this before I came up here. A good example of uh, shoulder surfing. The guy, the guy right there with the uh, clipboard at the desk. That's a that's a pretty good example of what shoulder surfing is. He's writing down usernames and passwords as she's typing them in. Um, unfortunately, if you get attacked by identity theft, there's there's a lot of bad stuff that's going to happen. You, you know, your uh, credit's going to be terrible, or you'll be in court. Oh, there, there's just a bunch of stuff. So some things you should do is get your credit report at least twice a year, you know, check over it, make sure everything's okay, check it with the stuff that you have. If there's something different on it, you need to contact somebody about it. Uh, sign up for credit monitor monitoring services. You know, Visa has that protection plan for identity theft. That's a pretty good idea. But Visa, we tried that out just as a test with the Visa card, and Visa wants a bunch of information from you just to prove that it's identity theft and by the time you go through it it's just like not even really worth it because you're paying more money into them than you are anything else. Uh, the DMV for personal records you can go there like if you go to where I'm from and you go down there and you ask them about me they're going to be like oh that guy is always in here he's always taking defensive driving classes for where he works not for tickets. <laughs> I take different defensive driving than those people. I get to ride around in cop car. Uh, no, the front. <laughs> Usually behind the pedals and, yeah, uh, sometimes the back, depending, yeah. But uh, you can go there, and those people will usually give you any information you want. You can just go in and pose as somebody, and they'll be like, okay, here you go. Tell me work with the government. There's magazines that you can buy badges in. Uh, I have a badge in my wallet, but I'm not going to pull it out because I'm going to tape, and they'll probably see this at work. But uh, you can you can go out and you can buy a badge that says, like, police officer or, like, uh, U.S. Marshal or whatever, and you can have your name put on it for, like, 30 bucks, and they'll send it to you in the mail, and you'll get a wallet with it, and you can be like, look, I'm official, and people are like, oh, okay, you have a badge. I'm not even going to ask for ID. Yeah. And I get 10% off at Hooters. <laughs> but uh, the badges are, you know, a big thing. I've been to places where I walk in and they'll be like, no, you're not allowed in here. you got to be authorized personnel. And I'll whip out the badge and be like, 
they'll be like, have a nice day, sir. I'm like, thank you very much. You too, thanks. And, you know, go about my business doing whatever I want. Because people are they're scared of the badge for some reason. And all you got to do is ask the ID or, you know, they'll usually have a little, like, cert card or something in their wallet or with them. I have to carry two of them with me for the stuff that I do. And you can be like, let me see them. I don't believe that you're an officer or whatever. And just whip them out and hand it to them and be like, there you go. And they're like, okay, he's a firefighter. Where'd you get him? All you got to do is search for badges for sale online. I mean, you can get them from, like, a, a main supplier is a company called Gauls, the G-A-L-L-S. Yeah, you can, uh, you know, write down. Yeah, you can, I mean, you can go there. I mean, they sell other stuff than badges. They sell, like, tactical equipment and, yeah, lock picks. What, yeah, you've heard of it before. I mean, yeah, you buy anything there, and they just don't care. All right, this is just a uh, a little, not really a chart, but an outline of the stuff that they want. They want your Social Security card or number, driver's license, your credit information, your bank account information, your mother's maiden name, your home and address, phone number, and any other information that can help them out. Um, usually, this right here, the bank account information, that's kind of hard to get because banks are getting smarter than they were a couple years ago. Mother's maiden name, if you're a guy, that could be kind of easy, it could be kind of hard. Uh, usually a lot of the thieves and stuff are pretty close to the family, which is weird, and they usually know a lot of this information already. Other information that can help you, um, information about your kids, if you have kids, what grade they're in, what schools they go to, you know, their habits, what they do, um, past like stuff that you've done in the past, you know, say if like I'm attacking you and I want to know more information about you, I'm not going to come to you and be like, hey man, I'm going to steal your identity in a couple of days. I don't want you to know, but I want you to tell me everything about you. Now you're not going to do that. You're going to go to his friends. You're going to talk to his friends, you know, his girlfriend, you know, you could uh, follow him around some, you know, not make it obvious, just show up to some places and Follow him around and find out what his habits are. You know, and that's a perfect way to get information about people. You know, you find out, like, he goes into a store, say, twice a week. Go into that store and be like, yeah, I'm a private investigator, and I need to know what that guy was doing in here. And they'll be like, okay, don't arrest me. Here you go. Um, a lot of the steps for this are... Uh, if you're ever attacked, gather as much information up. If it's a credit thing, they're trying to go after you, gather all your banking information up, take it to the police. Take it, contact your bank, like, immediately. Tell them to stop, you know, whatever comes out of that account, to make sure it stops, you know, not to let it out. Cancel everything, put your account on hold. Uh, when you're dealing with law enforcement and financial institution, log all your conversations with them. Uh, even if it's like a 10-minute thing, you know, make sure you jot notes down, bring a tape recorder, because um, you're going to have to go to court over it. And if the cop says something wrong to you that he shouldn't have said or the financial institution, a video, you know, voice recorder with them saying whatever on tape will hold up more in court than instead of saying, yeah, that guy said he's going to back me up 100%. Well, if you get him saying that on tape, he has to follow through with his word. Uh, keep all copies of letters and documents that you get from these people, this will also help out. Uh, make multiple photocopies of them because if the thief finds out that you're trying to go after him and he hasn't been caught yet, I guarantee that ha that guy has some friends in uh, pretty low places that can you know go into your house, trash it up a little bit, get rid of all that information. Um, one thing that actually happened to me that, like a year ago that I'm still paying stuff off, I had a guy write checks underneath my name. My checks, and he always signed my name, and I'm from a real small town, and they really don't check ID all the time. And uh, he wrote about $2,000 worth of stuff. Well, I was getting this information from the bank. Well, I wanted to make sure, because I was, I was living with this person that was doing this, I wanted to make sure that, you know, he wasn't going to find the information. So as soon as I got something, I'd, you know, write my name and my address on it, 
and a date at the bottom of it. I'd date all the letters, and I'd send it back out in the mail. You know, why it's in the mail, nobody can do anything to it because he wasn't a postal worker, so he couldn't get the mail before it came in. And it'd come back in again, and I'd write the date on it and send it back out. Well, when I went to court and I gave the judge this letter, the judge was like, why are all these dates on here? I was like, I sent it out in the mail every time. Every time it came back, I'd send it out again. And he's like, so this letter hasn't been opened any? And I was like, no. So, you know, we opened it up in court, and he read it off. And long story short, the guy that did that stuff got in a lot of trouble. So... Um, if you're ever attacked, you're going to feel a lot of, like, uh, physical, you know, emotional stress. You may even think about killing yourself, you know, it'll never end. Uh, that's not a good thing to do. Actually, being attacked can be an actual, like, it's not a good thing because it's, it's a really terrible thing. But it's a good thing because then you know what it's like and you can tell other people about it. Uh, you know, you can set up groups and, you know, talk to people and, try to get stuff changed, um, you know, you'll feel separated from your family, um, which isn't a good thing. I'd talk to them, you know, about whatever because they could probably help you out. All right, um, here's some things you could do on here. You could uh, join a support group or you could start one. You could help other victims. You could work on the change laws. You can work on public awareness. Um, if this happens within a company, like I said earlier, I was in the military. Um, the branch that I was in when we were getting rid of documents, they'd bring them to this big, like, like the size of this room and the big paper machine that, like, just compress them together. And they'd just take, like, these big carts and they would just dump these documents in there. They wouldn't even be shredded. Well, one day I had to work in there because, uh, I just had to. So I was looking at all these documents, and there's, like, names, socials, address, rank, uh, what schools they've been to, you know, everything in the world about these people was on these sheets of paper. And then you'd get some that would have, like, credit card numbers on them, like, just we're talking, like, stacks of papers of, of this stuff. Like, I think I've, I've seen everybody's name that was at the base that I was at that was on those papers. I was talking to the guy about why they don't shred them. And he's like, well, the reason we don't shred them is it costs too much money, you know. So we just throw them all in these bins, and we, we, like, compact them together, and we take them out to this place, and we bury them. And I'm like, you think that's very smart, you know, burying these documents? He's like, yeah, you know, he's like, they'll get in the ground, and they'll get dirty. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, they'll get they'll get dirty, but they're still, you know, readable. He's like, well, that's not our problem. Once they leave this space, they're not our concern anymore. They're, you know, just not their concern. They're whoever finds them, whoever finds them, because they bury them out in this big field. He, yeah, it's messed up, isn't it? Um, you can help other victims, like I said. You can... Get active with your police department. Um, you can talk to lawyers about it. You could do like I'm doing. You could get up here and do a speech in front of a bunch of people. That usually kind of helps. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just wanted to say that there's, there's um, a lot of different businesses and people that for some reason or, not, or another, they're always asking for your Social Security number. You don't have to give it to almost anybody. There's, there's almost no reason at all you have to give that number. Yeah. Out. And um, in fact, there's a, a federal statute called the Privacy Act that mandates a penalty of a thousand dollars for those people if they won't give you the service or whatever it is that, that they're offering without that social security number. Yeah. Uh, does it? You oh. can go to a, a website, lawfulpath.com. Mm -hmm. Get a copy of that privacy act notice, and that's really good for just anybody. When they see that, they'll just buckle. Okay, whatever it is, you got it. You don't have to give them that number. Yeah, that's cool. I have to remember that. I'll print one up and bring it with me. Uh, there's another thing. Does anybody have have a, a Verizon phone in here? You and you and you. There's like three or four people. Verizon is very insecure. <laughs> when it, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys know that. When I was at another conference, when we I did a social engineering talk, 
and we did a, a thing with Verizon where some guy from the audience gave us his number off his phone. We called up, and they were just telling us, you know, whatever we wanted. Like, we were their best friend, whatever we wouldn't know about this person. And then we cut his phone service off during the middle of the talk. And they were like, well, you're going to have to pay a, a cancellation fee where we really don't care, you know. And they're like, okay, well, thank you. Have a nice day, sir. No problem. You know, they they just told us, you know, when we called up and we gave them this information, they asked us for, like, a PIN number, you know, the stuff they ask you for on the phone. We were like, we're on a landline. We don't feel like we should be giving this information out. We're at a convention, you know. And they were like, oh, okay, you know, have a nice day. Yeah, it's like the people that we got a hold of, and they weren't from America, you know. I, yeah, so I guess they were scared of us, kind of. And uh, so they were like, you know, whatever you want, you got it. Just don't hurt me type deal over the phone. And Yeah, exactly, you know. And uh, another territory of the United States in a few months. But uh, they, they were real nice. They gave us what we wanted. We gave them very little information. Another, what did we give them? We gave them the dude's name and the phone number. And he gave us some other information about him, but it was, like, stupid stuff that didn't even, you know, go along with his account. Like, he was like, yeah, they know I work for a computer company because I'm always calling. I'm like, yeah, I'm having a really bad day today at work. And they're like, oh, and I'm like, this computer stuff's just getting crazy. I'm going to go quit. And they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, you're having a bad day. I'm like, I'm super stressed out, you know. And they're like, well, I'll try to make this easy and convenient for you. And we're like, Awesome, thank you. And there's like there's like a, a whole crowd of like 200 people that are just like, did she just say that on the phone? And we're like, yeah, you know. It was real easy, you know, with companies like that. AOL is another bad one. Um, oh, I don't know. I, I never talked to him after that. <laughs> he was a... Uh, yeah, we're, we're no longer talking. He's still mad at me. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why he was mad. That's the only thing. He works for a computer company. Yeah, but you guys all work for computer companies. You guys make big bucks. <laughs> um, another one, like AOL, like I said, another a thing you can do is get on the phone with some of your buddies and three-way call them at the same time, AOL. And sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't, but they'll pick up the phone at the same time. And, you know, everybody on the phone gets real quiet. And they'll be like, they'll start talking to each other. Well, they'll be giving out confidential information over the phone to each other because their their lines just got crossed and they needed to see where they're from. And they'll give out, uh, they have like these numbers, um, like, I guess like a, a work number or something you're not supposed to give out through AOL. I don't know why. Um, but they'll be calling each other, well, where are you from? Well, I'm in, like, California. Oh, I'm in New York. Well, what's your badge number? Bam, you have this badge number just like that. And when the Merlin attacks were going on through AOL, that was also a big deal. That's when they stopped uh, giving out the badge number. I think my buddy Kevin remembers that, prank calling people like that. But, you know, people be like, oh, that's prank calling. Well, you're getting, I was getting valuable information over the phone while my friends were getting a kick out of it. I was getting names, badges, numbers, locations, whatever. And then you could call up. I didn't, but I'm saying you could call up and ask me to like a general manager and be like, yeah, my name's this, and this is my, you know, address or whatever, you know, and I'm in this state because you can use, like, Switchboard to find out, you know, where people are. And Switchboard will even give you a nice little map of exactly where they are. So if you want to go, like, say, be an identity thief and you want to hit this person up, you have this nice little Google map that gives you exact location of their house and tells you what the nearest road is and the fastest route from your house. And it's, it's just, it's insane. Anybody got any questions? Anybody? Yes, sir. Yeah, you have to. I've had people do that with me. Yeah, I'm from Tennessee. Here, everybody's always like, we're recording you. So it's like, okay, I'm, this is really the only state I've lived in other than Florida. So.
Yeah, so where they know it's still being recorded. And We used to do a uh, like a phone BBS, and we used to get people, you know, whenever somebody came in, it would make like this beeping sound or whatever, so you could tell another person just got on the phone. And we had a guy in there one time forever. He was always like, oh, "Yeah, I'm recording this conversation," and we're like, "You're not gonna learn anything, man. We're all drunk and we're goofing off on on the phones." And he's just like, "Oh, okay, whatever. You know, I'm still recording it." And so a bunch of us would get off and we'd go hop on another one and we'd have somebody on there doing the same thing. I don't know why, but everybody just liked recording us. It was, it was pretty crazy. I guess so. Uh, I, I never really said anything stupid over the phone, so I was always quiet. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? Anybody. How much time do we have left? Uh, oh, alright. Give me some questions. We have 20 minutes. Uh, yeah, I checked into stuff like that. You know, I was going to get a credit report for myself. Um, all, all, all the sites I've seen were always pay, so I have to remember that. What was it? Annualcreditreport.com. All right, and then there's switchboard.com. Yes, sir. Probably not two years here. Tennessee is a cheap state, so yeah, it's probably like six months. Anybody else got any questions? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't have credit cards, so that's, that's perfectly fine with me. I'm um, sorry, sir? What? Yeah, you usually have to show up and pose as somebody. Um, I used to work for an inter a big in internet company down in uh, Florida, and when I first started working there, that's all I did was listen to phone calls all day because they were getting attacked over the phone, and the the call center was giving out information. So, eight months, my first eight months there. All I did every day was put on a headset, 
turn the lights off in my office, play some music, and listen to phone calls. And if I heard something going wrong, I'd have to, like, you know, drop their thing, and I'd have to get on the phone and being like, no, we don't allow that. Well, who are you? Well, I'm, you know, the general manager of this computer company, and we don't allow that information out over the phone. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. Just hang out. And I did this every day at least ten times. So uh, Internet companies, I guess, are, you know, they're real big for being attacked like that because they have all the information that you need. And then the, uh, the company I worked for, when I got there, we, they were in the middle of shutting down and sending our jobs overseas. Well, they had a, uh, an online website that you could go to that was very basic, like HTML login type deal. And in the source code, it had the login name and password for the admin. And you could just log into it and do whatever you wanted. And they had everything on there. And I was always like, why is that like that? He's like, well, in case we ever get a new admin, and I'm like, why don't you just email it to her, to him, or issue it over the phone, or you know, I am or whatever. He's like, well, this is easier, so we don't have to talk to him. And I was like, oh, uh, yeah, I can't give that out, <laughs> even though they're in the Philippines now. But uh, yeah. It's, uh, Yeah, I remember reading stuff about that. McDonald's where I live doesn't have wireless. That's a problem. Cause I live in the country. <laughs> no, um, my town's a lot smaller than that. Yeah. That that's yeah, that was when Home Depot got attacked. Those guys went in and they took a bunch of information from them and they ended up getting caught like what, like a month later. But then Home Depot was like, Oh, that's bad, we shouldn't do that anymore and they probably turned well, it's probably still on some of their computers. Yeah. That gives me an idea. Yeah, go play around later on. In Nashville. Yeah. Everybody wanna go to Home Depot? <laughs> yeah. Anybody else got any questions? Anybody else? Oh. No, I guess no more questions. How long do we have? Oh. Kevin, you got any questions? You're always full of questions, man. Huh? I can't dance at all. You gotta get me, you gotta get me really drunk, like I was last night. Yeah, Kevin. Oh, this is a good example. Okay, me and that guy right back there in the red shirt. Everybody look out. Yeah, point that guy right there. Yeah, with the glasses on. Uh, I spoke at his college last year. Um, on this, I did a real in-depth talk on social engineering to about 1,200 people. It was pretty crazy. I've never spoke to a crowd that big before. But they have this shipping company that is massive. It's on top of this hill, and they're building four of them. And they make, like, a square or something, and there's going to be, like, some little, like, courtyard in the middle and ponies and stuff. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And now it's, like, weird. This lady was telling us all this stuff, and she was showing us a blueprint. Like, they're going to have a pool, and they have uh, – no, I'll get into the stuff they have. Well, so we walk in there. And uh, this lady is sitting at the front desk, and there's these big, like, say I'm the lady at the desk. Well, like, this screen is these big steel doors with this little, like, card swiping thing on the side of it. And people were going in and out of it, and we were like, well, I wonder what's back there, because everybody at the college didn't know what this building was. So we tell them that we're with the news. And not the new, like regular news, but like with the college campus, like we're doing like a newsletter, and we're interviewing companies, and we were doing stuff on like economics and and stuff like that. And they were like, "Oh, wow, this is really cool." Well, the lady's like, "Hold on, I'll get a manager for you." So the manager comes down. We're talking to him outside of these big giant steel doors, and we're still wondering, "I wonder what's in there. How are we going to get in there?" Well, 
the dude would say something to us, and we'd switch the question, or, well, the, the thing around into a question. And, you know, we were there for like a good hour and a half, and the guy was like, well, what do you guys know? And Kevin started talking to him about economics, and he was just like, uh, okay, yeah, come on, let me let me take you on a tour of this place. And this is like one of the number one trucking companies in the United States. And we're like, all right, this is cool, we're going to go on a tour. Well, we walk in, and there's a big giant subway, not like subway with trains, but like the restaurant inside there. And he was like, walking along, he was like, this is where we keep all of our banking information from all the uh, drop-offs and everything that we do. Um, every company that we go to, they have to fax us a copy, and we put it in here, and we keep them for five years. Go to the next room. This is a conference room. It, it has It's in, equipped with uh, wireless and, and everything. We're like, okay, and go on the next room. And... Like, it was like room after room. It was more and more financial stuff that this company had. Well, we end up going out on the balcony, and it's just the three of us, and we're talking out there. And we were like, well, where did these trucks go? And he's like, um, all over the United States. And we're like, well, where do, you know, I know they go all over the United States, but, I mean, how, how do they get there? Well, let me show you a map of the routes that the trucks are allowed to take. I'm like, what if I'm going to go rob one of these trucks? You know, that's the only reason I'm there, you know. Is I'm going to, you know, pull a Fast and Furious move. I'm going to pull my Civic in front of it. I'm going to shoot through the window and get my buddy to crawl in there, you know. That type of deal. Well, this guy was real nice and he was telling us everything. He was like, the trucks start here in Chattanooga, and then they go up the states, and then they have to stop right here for at least five hours to, to switch trucks off and get their trucks worked on. You're like, all right, got five hour opportunity there. He's like, and then they go up here, and they have to make another stop. And we're like, all right. He's like, but here they drop off their trailers, and another truck comes, and we're like, okay, well these trailers are usually unmanned for like a couple hours bingo, you know, and then they come back down, and they make a big loop around Chattanooga again, because they have to go by, like, the big station place that we were at to pick up more stuff, and then they go, you know, wherever else, but, like, they take, like, 24, and, you know, like, all all the major interstates, and then, uh, you guys know the J.B. Hunt uh, semi-trucks, big, with the yellow and stuff? These guys own J.B. Hunt, and they they own, like, what, like, 30% of all the major uh, shipping for trucks and stuff. And we were just like, wow. And he's like, yeah, you know, let me show you some more stuff. They have a computer room that they track all the trucks, and it's, it's just, it's insane. I really didn't learn anything when I was in there, but how to rob trucks. <laughs> <laughs> have that happen quite a bit where I live. Whenever the military comes through with the, like tanks or Apaches or jet fuel, we know. We have to go stand out on the side of the road with silver suits on just in case if they crash because we're there for them. Yes, sir. Yeah, he was telling us stuff about that. It was like, they keep a real close eye on them, but we're, we're you know, if they stop somewhere, no time, it's, you know, they're going to go inside the diner and they're going to go eat, and me and my buddies are going to come up behind the truck and you know, do whatever we need to do. Did you have a question? No? Okay. Anybody got any questions about that? Oh, we got some really neat stuff while we were there, too. We got a 
a couple of pamphlets of some maps. And yeah, a few financial records, a couple of IDs. It was, uh, it was pretty crazy. When we went to a fiber optics plant. That was pretty, we didn't go on tour of that, but the guy was like, come on in. We're like, no, it's all right. It kind of smells bad. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. I, I've I've seen stuff like that. Like when here's the thing: when I lived in Florida, the fire department's like a real big deal down there, kind of like it is up north. And um, the Olsen twins had their birthday, well, one of their birthday parties down the road from where I lived in Ebor, and we were like, well, we want to go to that, you know? It's the Olsen twins are turning 18, you know? <laughs> yeah. So they're like. It's strictly VIP. You have to have at least five bodyguards with you to get through the front door, you know. We shout, we're like, fire department. They're like, have a nice day. We're like, you know, we're going we're gonna to go do an inspection of crowd control, you know. Yeah, just walked on in. Nobody ever said anything, you know. Like I said, people are scared of the badge. It's like you're not going to have somebody get up in your face and be like, you're not allowed in. Well, okay, you just touched me. That's an assault on an officer, you know. Type deal. Call my buddies up at the police station. Sir, can you come down and remove this bouncer at the door, please? You just touched me. And sure enough, you know, they'll come down, you know, and do it for you. It's 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 crazy, but you know, fire department has its perks uh, and, and flaws and stuff. Yes, sir. Yeah, people are just like that, and they're they don't want to question anything because they're scared if they get qu- you know you question them they're going in trouble. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, ask for an ID card. I've done that before. Yes, sir. Yeah. Here's an example of uh, pretty good security. I, well, at least I thought it was good. Our police station where I'm from, we have retinal scanners that are outside of the doors. They're on every door in that city for, you know, like government employees. Well, I'm supposed to be in it, and I'm not. And uh, I thought I was for a long time until the cops kept showing up. But you get three tries on it. And the first time, I held my eye up to it, and it was like, please stand back. So I thought I was too close to it. So I stood back and stuck my eye down in it again. You're too far away. And I'm like, okay. So I screwed up just a little bit more, and I stick my eye in it again. Please stand back. And this little red light starts flashing, and I'm like, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh. And uh, the next thing I know, there's cops running out the door, police cars running around the side, and I'm just like, I just went in the building, guys. I was knocking on the door. And nobody was letting me in. And uh, it was pretty crazy, but they let me in. And I'll be in it one day. All right, that's all, I guess. If you have any questions about any information uh, on here or some social engineering stuff, you can uh, 
Email me at criticalmass24 at gmail.com, or you can go to my website, cprox.com. Thank you.